to Atlantica Apartments. Opposite a cold tourist and resort center. It is an apartment for the rich and those that want to be rich. Do you know you can buy the future if you know where to shop? Do you know that Dangote Refinery will be opened by December with about 70,000 workers and 2,000 engineers? Atlantica Apartment is at the heart of it all, just directly beside the zone. It is a two-bedroom apartment with infrastructure. When you buy Atlantica Apartment, you have bought the future. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to be introducing to you the next speaker for today. His name is Dayo Ayeni. His full name Mr. is... Mr. Ekundayo Ayeni is an alumni of the Harvard University Executive Program where he studied digital marketing, social media marketing. Ekundayo is a certified social media strategist USA who served on the pioneering team that was responsible for the first web portal for over 15,000 students at his alma mater, the Federal University of Technology, Mina, Nigeria, in 2005. Ekundayo is the CEO of Business Plus Services. This is a proudly Nigerian specialist digital marketing agency that is focused on helping organizations and companies in both the public and private sectors to produce results by presenting them with an extensive range of business solutions to adequately generate traction, interaction and conversions for clients who make use of digital media. He has delivered digital marketing campaigns for both business-to-business -business and business-to-consumer companies in different sections of the, of the economy, ranging financial institutions, government parastatals, real estate, religious organizations, state government, telecoms. So, um, good evening everyone and uh, good morning, good afternoon to people from every other side of the world. Um, it's pretty interesting to be here today. Um, I would say this honor is not taken for granted. Uh, Tade is a long-standing friend. Uh, we've done stuff together. You know, when I looked at the investment um, stuff he was talking about, I think you guys are even coming late. I think by now everybody should have invested. And um, I would also advise um, in this uh, mini invest uh, plan, if you are online now, just go to the website. Um, just go there and pay on Flutter with immediately. It's um, it pays to invest, and I can tell you that for free. I've no, I've done stuff with Tade, and I have no cause to regret. I've known Tade over the years, and I can tell you I have no cause to regret. He's one of my money masters. You know, we usually have this joke where um, Tade will be showing me the new things money is talking about in town, and his name Cash has just, just come about. You know, working with Tade has also helped me. You know, build some bit of cash flow, some understanding. You know, many people look at cash flow alone; they don't even look at profitability. But um, Tade had shown me a lot of things around profitability. I remember it took me to, uh, I think it was the land somewhere around um, just by the uh, free trade zone. Um, by yeah, by the free trade zone, we were there. We stood there, we we're looking at the free trade zone. That was how close it is, and. And that's what is telling you to invest in. And that was about a year ago. And I invested about four point something million then. Um, so I want you guys to wake up and smell the coffee. Because opportunities like this, you would come back maybe in the next five years and then you're telling stories of, uh, I knew when they were doing it, you know. Don't be like my dad. I'm, uh, my dad is late and he used to say, oh, um, back in the days, my, uh, my friends were going to Lagos. I didn't know what that meant until I got to Lagos too. So me now, I don't come back to tell my children stories of how I never made it in life, you know? Um, so that I won't say back in the days. But that being said, I'm, I'm going to be sharing about a bit of networking. How do you do networking? How do you get business done? As I speak to you, I'm in Abuja, um, and I've come to network. I just finished uh, a meeting with um, a very top high-ranking uh, person on Facebook, she handles a whole region on Facebook in terms of um, uh, projects. And, you know, uh, I didn't just go there to go and make noise, you know. I went there to close deals. And there are a lot of people who just wake up every day without a strategy on how to move to the next level. 
If I tell you my life story, it's a story about how you network from stage to stage. I'm not going to share a slide with you yet. Um, I even just want to tell you a story. You know, it's very difficult to share slide after Obon King has spoken. And you know, Obon King is, um, is the king of the world. And once he's talking, there's power in those words. Um, you know, God's gift to man, hunger. <laughs> Every time I hear that thing, I just ask myself, okay, am I hungry enough? Because it depends on the aspect of life you're hungry about. And when I wanted to do some deals at the next level, I moved to Abuja. I'm going to be here for the next um, four weeks. Um, you can see the apartment I'm staying. It cost me money to be in this apartment, a lot of money. And um, I can tell you for free that I've made the money back within five days of sitting down here, just networking. So if you wake up tomorrow morning and all you're doing is how do I go to my next neighbor that doesn't inspire you, then I think you should check your network networking capabilities. I will go straight and tell you some of the things I've done that made me successful. First, you would hardly or never see me uh, attend a tech or a digital marketing event. Although I do digital marketing big time, I manage accounts of the biggest of the biggest in Nigeria by God's grace today. But I can tell you for free that I would, you would never see me go and attend a digital marketing conference. If any of you have ever seen me there before, maybe I came to speak. You would never see me go uh, attend a digital conference. I don't go to industry events. I have nothing doing there because we're all same, same. So that is the first rule of the game. Never go to your industry events where you're all same, same. I rather will go to barriers, to weddings, to birthdays, to naming ceremonies where I can network with the kind of people who are about to give me money. So in those meetings where I go to abstract industry events, that's the next layer. But I'll just explain this first one to you. Now, there are things, there are people where you meet them in Berry. I remember uh, we started doing some transaction with one time MD of First Bank, and I met him at a barrier. That was why I closed the deal. He will never come to a digital marketing conference to come and sit. That is clear. I will never meet such guys there. But in the barrier, the guy is relaxed, is happy, you know, he's trying to network, he's trying to meet people. That was where we closed our first transaction with the guy. And that guy sells houses in Banana Island and all of those places. So I can tell you for free that that is the first thing you must get clearly in your mind. Don't focus on people of same feather, people of like uh, quotes. I'm not telling you it's bad to go. If, they, if you want to attend your stuff. But if you want to scale your business, you don't go to such events. Now, the next thing you need to also know is that you also go to an abstract industry event. And when I mean abstract industry event, you can see me in an HR conference. You can see me in marketing conference. You can see me where decision makers are gathering because of, the, of like directors conference, all those things. That's where you see me. Because every time I go to those, those conferences, I also have a, I have a game plan attending those conferences. So I will tell you the, the first game plan. I always don't dress like them. So for example, I went to um, a mobile money conference at the time and I noticed top bank executives would be there. I wore my native with my cap complete. Every other person was in suit and tie. So I don't look like them. So when I approach you, you know outrightly that I'm not one of you. So I'm here to sell and to collect money and to close deals. So from that event, we got banks signing up for our product at that time. So I can tell you that that is the next layer that you must learn in terms of networking. You just don't wake up and say, oh, I'm going into um, this event. And then because it's bankers event, I must wear suit and tie. I go on the abstract. So that is one. From that same event, another thing gave back to the next layer. I'm going to tell you the next one now which is the number three things you, mu you must learn in this networking business. Now, which I, I did was I woke up, I saw a company I want to do a uh, transaction with. I overheard the guy when he was speaking. He was uh, MD of one of the biggest insurance companies, if not the biggest in Nigeria, uh, local um, I mean, indigenous um, insurance company. And the guy spoke and said, oh, we're going to be going digital. We want to go big time in digital and all of that. You know, the next thing I did, I checked out the guy's leg. I saw the size of his shoe. I confirmed from somebody and said, you know, this guy, what shoe will it be? What shoe size are you looking at? So the guy looked at it, smiled, and said, okay, this guy will be wearing 44. And you know what I did? 
I went to one of my big clients, then David Wedge, and I said to him, you know what, I need a very powerful 44 size shoe. I took the 44 size shoe, I removed one from the box, you know, the shoe box. I didn't buy those ones you have in Lylon. I bought it in the shoe box. I removed one leg of the shoe, put it in the box, did a handwritten note, and I said, oh, dear so and so person, I'm not, I won't mention his name so that um, tomorrow you guys won't go and meet him. Um, and then I wrote certain things. Oh, my name is Ayane Kunda. You know, we, are, we, we cross paths during the so and so conference. And I just felt, um, went to digital marketing and all of these. And very brief, in one paragraph, I'd finish everything I needed to say to him. And the next paragraph, I said, now I have one leg of my shoe in in your office. I wish you would give me some audience so that I can give you the next leg of the shoe. If you can guarantee that my creativity, and you like my creativity, you are happy with what I'm doing, this is my phone number, call me or do me an email. And I put my signature there and, and, and we sent it in. Immediately, the guy saw the box of shoes and he opened it and he read what was inside. He picked up his phone and called me and said, this guy, you are crazy. I need to do business with you. You are crazy. I like your creativity. Immediately, that happened. I went there with my second leg of shoe. We started the conversation. We closed the transaction in two weeks. You know when? Empty minutes on a note and send it to um, procurement and all the people in uh, corporate comes and say, do business with this guy. They released my money in three weeks. It took them two months to prepare materials for that conference. I mean, for that, for that particular campaign we did for them. It took them two months. So I collected money. Week one, I kept calling. So when are we starting this campaign? Week two... six months hello when it was about six weeks into the whole conversation i asked them how far you know what this guy did for me they came to me after eight weeks that we are now ready to run campaign with you after they've paid me long 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 time ago so i want you to understand that networking is crazy so i give you another one so we have done business with this particular organization for a particular year and we had made so much money from them and I needed to confuse everybody that were at top level in that organization. Now I'm telling you the next level of networking. And what I did was very simple. At the end of the year, we decided to buy cows for all the top executives in that organization. Now that was our own amper. When people were carrying normal amper to people, I discovered it was cheaper for us to run that kind of networking approach than to go and buy an amper of 200,000, 300,000 that they will be carrying like trolley. We took cows to their houses. And you know, by the time the cows got there, one of them, you know, um, was, ne was not a Nigerian, kind of. The children had never seen cow before. They were telling their mom, please, can we keep it as a pet? So you can imagine how much business they've been doing with me since then. Now, I give you another quick one. Last year, we did a similar model where during the Christmas period, when people were disbursing stuff, we decided to disburse goods. And to this particular compound, I needed to make a statement to the man. So I told the guy who was going to deliver that you need to release two goats that will run around in the compound so that will create a presence. So at the time my staff got there with the boss and all of that, and they delivered the goats, they released the two. And the goats were running around. They said the man had dogs in the cage and the dogs were making all the noise, roaring. They knew we brought a gift because we wanted to be in their mind. That is one major lesson you must learn. If you want to go into the mind of an executive, you need to, sh to make a, a shaking, something that will create a presence for them. Now, I don't do the traditional method of, you know, you exchange card, you send email. Now, those things still work. I still do them some of the time. If um, I have some time, I'll tell you how I use those ones. They are totally different from what people do. Um, in my emails, what I do in those kind of cases, because those are the lower entry points in terms of networking. So you meet somebody at an event, you have finished the conversation. Now, how do you manage that relationship from that point? Because most people just get stuck at that point of conversation. So what I did for them was, what I usually do for them, I just get um, my email, I write you an email. Hi, it was, um, I must be embarrassingly honest with you. I think that's the first line I usually use. Uh, uh, let me see if I can, uh, okay. Okay, maybe I'll share my emails with you later. I think some of them are a bit sensitive. Now, 
I would say, start with by saying I'm, I must be embarrassingly honest with you. It was great learning from you yesterday. I can't believe that um, I had the opportunity of meeting you. Um, this project you talked about was fantastic. But I'm wishing that we can have it, a conversation over a Malau coffee. I don't know what you prefer. I would never ask you to come and do lunch with me. I would never ask you to come and do dinner with me. I will ask you specifically to come and sit down with me to eat Amala. It's guaranteed that we cannot eat Amala in 20 minutes. It's guaranteed that I will have enough year time, year time with you, year time with you for over 30 minutes because we would be ha having conversation and the lowest time a man can ever make negotiation. If, for example, many of us who are, who are reading the Bible, who are Christians, is when people want to eat. The time that people become very, very vulnerable is when they are eating. Example, Esau and Jacob. When the man is hungry, he makes any kind of negotiation. One of the lessons one of my mentors taught me, which is um, um, uh, Tabi, he said, never negotiate when you are hungry. Never negotiate when you are hungry. Because many people are there typing and doing stuff, sending emails, and tomorrow want to come and greet you in the office. Never do office meetings. People are too serious in the office. There are things they will never discuss with you in the office because Yoruba says, the world has years. So there are things they will never discuss with you. There are conversations that are meant to be on Sunday evening. Baba, have you finished today in church? Can we meet? I want to give you Amala. I want to give you Kilishi. I want to do this. Let's sit down and talk. Two weeks ago, I tell you, okay, three weeks ago, I'll give you something that brought me back to this town in Abuja. Three weeks ago, I came to this town. I have a friend who runs a, an auto workshop. And while I was seated there, uh, it was just, you know, just introduced me to a guy who had just come to fix a, a Benz. Now, seeing the Benz, the Mercedes, it looks like, this guy looks rich, but I don't know what the guy does. So the next thing I did was uh, we engaged, we started talking. So I started sounding him out in different aspects of life. So I discovered the guy was interested in technology, talking about how he did this and all of that, because one of the rules you learn in, in the book, um, the, the Canadian wrote about uh, how to win friends and influence people, allow people to talk. People he kept talking, 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 talking. When the conversation was on, the guy talked about tech and all of that. Next thing I asked him, where do you work? He laughed. He didn't want to tell me. He works in the government agency. So when I saw that this guy works in a place where I would like to do business, I won't tell you the name of the agency because you guys will catch me. I just threw a bait to the guy. I said, please, I want to go and eat. Where can we get good food? He now started describing because people are willing to give information when you seek for help. Because in the book, um, How to Win Friends and Influence People, say people want to talk. So allow, allow them to talk. So I told the guy, ah, can I get food? Now describe one place who can get a mala up and the dam or something. That was like three weeks ago. And I said, no problem. By the time I was leaving, I sent him an SMS because I don't save people's number. When people say, this is my number, you just save the number. I will save it and send you a text with my name. It was good meeting you. I look forward to meeting you again. This is my name. I send it to you instantly there. And I will ask you, did you get my text message? I won't flash you and tell you to save my name the way you want to save it. I will text you instantly there when I know you are a big catch for me. So the guy saved my name. Later that evening, I sent him a text message. Thank you for the recommendation about the food. I'm so happy. It was a nice place to go to. Can you send me your address? I want to send you a particular book. The guy now laughed, replied me, hello, uh, hello, hello, or something. Just replied me. The following day, I sent him another message that I've purchased what I want to give to you as a gift. Will you give me an opportunity to be a blessing and an opportunity to your life? I'm talking of a guy who is of a different religion from mine. And the guy sent me his address. I sent a DHL with a book inside and a handwritten note thanking him for an opportunity to speak with him the other day. You know what happened? I'm back in Abuja. I've done business with this guy. If I've not made money, I've made like $10,000 from the guy in three weeks. So I can tell you for free that there are opportunities everywhere. It's the way you've been networking that is the issue. You are doing it as if you are doing the aggressive marketing thing. You don't, look, when a lion or uh, um, when a lion or a tiger wants to catch a prey, they don't go there aggressively. They go stylishly. They go quietly. They approach this thing gradually, gradually, till the thing is not aware, till the prey is not aware. Then they jump on the prey. 
That is how to do networking. So when you wake up in the morning and all you're doing is, hey, how many how many people can I kill today? How many people will do business with us today? Let's go on the streets. Let's do this. And you become aggressive. They will run away. Nobody sees a trap and walk into it. The, so that is the principle. You have to go gradually. For Okay, so I give another instance from the Bible. From before... Jesus could get Peter. He first gave him fish. They catch fish inside this place. First, when he caught fish, they launched it. He got the fish. He now said to him that, "Okay, now you can catch fish. Now you can catch all that kind of fish." So that was how he onboarded that guy. So you must learn how to approach people stylishly. Look, I don't go to people's inbox on LinkedIn and I start typing, uh, my name is Ayan Kundayo. I'm the founder of so and so. I work for so and so organization. I do this, I do this. Please come and do business with us. When I see those things, I just look at you. Okay, this guy does not know how to catch at all. No hunter ever goes out there and chase. You see the pig like this or the goat or the ram or something you want to catch in the bush, maybe the antelope, and then you start pursuing it. Then you, it's when you get close, you shoot. No, you go strategically. You look for places. You know, I, I happen to stay with my grandfather a while. So uh, I was in the village for a, a period of my life. You know, for some short time of my life, I was in the village with my granddad. And the way he meticulously used to plan the traps, those are part of the lessons of life. The guy will look at it. Sometimes he will pack the leaf, he will smell it and look home. Mm, you say, oh, this, there was an antelope here. The thing has generated here. So that most likely means the, or the grass cutter. This is where they follow. The place will be looking smooth. It will check. It will do all the listen. If you stayed in the village, they will urinate on those parts so that because those animals like urine, um, urine, they will come there. Then he set his trap there. The next thing, you go there the following morning, it's caught. You don't do that when you're doing networking. Because um, you do that when you're doing it. Because people wake up. And all they go for is how to kill people. I give you a quick one again on LinkedIn. I go on LinkedIn. I look at your profile very well. Then I like your profile. I will first go to the articles you've written that make sense. I will put comments deliberately, not one line comments, a whole paragraph comment, so that you don't forget that somebody commented. Because LinkedIn will send you notification that somebody has commented. Then I will go inside your inbox and say, very fantastic profile. I wish we can have a chat sometime soon. You see, that comment I made is the first thing you will see. When I send you that inbox, oh, fantastic profile. I wish we can have a conversation soon. Do you know what has happened? I've killed you from start. You have not even thought of it. I've thrown you a bit. Now, these are principles that you can use in your networking start. That'll be your networking season. I will, I will tell you there is the principle of the sort. There's the principle of the bait. And then there is the principle of the poison. Now, the principle of the salt is that it takes a little salt, just a little salt, to make a whole dish sweet. And then if you over garnish it, if you over put the salt, the food will get spoiled. You won't even like the taste again. The food taste will go off. So there is a system of minimalism in terms of approaching big people. You don't approach people who are rich or top there or your prospective clients coming aggressively at them you will spoil the over again then the principle of the bait is that in everything they call a bait there is actually a hook inside so when a fish for example takes a bait or swallows a bait the fish did not actually swallow the hook the the fish actually swallowed the worm or the food that was on the on the hook but it was after he had swallowed it, then he got stuck. So the person gets, gets stuck and the person becomes liable to you. Let me give you how I usually use that. When I see that you're a prospect for me, I kill you with an act of kindness. When I mean an act of kindness, I hear your mother is doing birthday. I'm the first person to arrive there to make sure your mother's birthday is fine. I hear your father died. I will be the one to help them buy the caskets. Because those are emotional high points for you. You know, by the time I show up and I say, you know what, this project, oh, how are we doing it? I hear you want to do this project in your office. It's 100 million. Uh, how are you doing this? So and so. The guy feels he owes me. So I make people owe me favors. So you must make people owe you favor. So never, you know, your Bible will say, hey, I don't have to tell you. 
you must have poured enough water and you don't pour it for one person you pour it for several places such that many years after when you are gone I, they will be looking for a way to do favor to favor you when you see people are looking for a way to favor you look i give you i was discussing with a friend last night we went for dinner and i told him a story that is a case study from uh, the book of esther in the bible a man heard that they were going to kill the king had quickly went to do uh, whistle blowing and told the king ah, about somebody wants to kill your king the king caught those people you know the king survived the coup but you know what the king didn't do him anything didn't give him favor between when the king forgot him and the night the king cannot sleep what do you think was happening to him he was out there people were discussing and they were avoiding him that this guy can go and blow with you can go and tell the fofo can go and tell king that this is what is happening you no know? this is what's happening Meanwhile, his younger niece is the king's rival, and people were avoiding him, dodging him, looking at the kind of, hey, this guy, no, don't try this guy, don't go close to him, he will go and tell the king. Before you know what's happening, that guy became the most powerful person in that system. But there was a difference between when he sowed the seed of favor and when he reaped the reward of the, of the job he did. Now, the last one, which is the principle of the poison. It's not a bucket of poison that kills people. No matter how vo the volume of poison that you put into, into the food, the person, can, the person will still die. If you put one drop, the person will die. If you put plenty, the person will die. How do you use that in networking? There must be a level of value that you release that the person can never forget you. You must meet the person at the high emotional point. And when I mean high emotional point, at the point where they're either crying, they are very happy, or something, that you engage them at that point. They are most vulnerable states when you engage them at that point. There are people who have sat in conferences. I just noticed that the ring in your hand, the ring that the lady put in her hand, you will see the sign that the ring had been in that hand for a long time. I used this when I went for one Harvard meeting. That was two years ago, yeah. I noticed that, you know, when you're wearing for a long time, your the hand will have that sign of the ring. So I don't have my ring on. My ring had issues, so it was almost broken. So now that ring sign was there in her hand. And I just walked up to her. I said, ah, this must be very interesting. That I don't want to call you a MS, miss. And I also don't want to call you a missus yet. That what happened to the ring in your hand? The lady was wild. She said, you are the first person I'm meeting that has attention to details. And then the next thing, she went on to start telling me, you know, I just don't, I'm just tired of explaining to people. I've been trying to get married, something, something. This one didn't work. And before you know what, she had told me the story of her life in one night. And then from there, we became, you know, party, party, and business came out in some way. Now, those are other networking skills that you must have. You must have the ability to engage people in such a way that they can give you a feedback. i give you another short one for people who are doing a lot of uh, retail business. When you see somebody on, on Instagram and you want this person to engage you or you want to engage this person, you want the person to come and see your, your page, you know what you do? Go on the person's page and like as many pictures as you can. Instagram will obviously send the person notification. There is no way. The psychology, if you watch this movie called uh, The Social Dilemma, there is a psychology behind that idea of notification. The people will come back to come and like your page, to come and check your page. Then be strategic. When they come back to your page, go back and like their own page after two days. Like their page and then send them an inbox and say, I really like your profile. You're somebody I would like to talk to sometime soon. When you have some free time, let's talk. The person will engage you. I can guarantee you that. Another way you can do that on Instagram, because I'm just doing platform by platform, because if I would take you through a whole class of how to do this networking thing, if I do slide, do you get all this resource? The next thing is, for example, you want to get followers on Instagram. You want to get people to engage you on Instagram. Go to the 10 top pages that you know is related to your business or to the kind of service you're about to do. Now, when you've gotten those 10 pages that you want to follow, go and set notification on notification when they post, immediately when they post, get notification. 
Look for pages that have a lot of followers. So uh, let me mention like maybe Tunde Ednot, um, Instagram, Babista Blog, all those guys. Set notification that immediately they post, you would want to, you want to know. Immediately you get that notification. Go under anything they've posted and be the first to comment. Once you are the first person to comment, you have controlled all every other person's comments because every time there is a post, the first person or the first five people to comment are the people who give direction to the remaining conversation. So if, for example, we are doing answers conversation now and somebody comments, uh, somebody posts something, one of these big brands, I mean, these big um, influencers post something and you are the first to comment and you narrate one story that makes it sweet, do you know what happens? You have controlled all the conversation in that blog, in, in that Instagram page. Then people begin to either go for or against. You can never be neutral because controversy sells. You can either go for or against. Let me give you somebody that is doing it now and everybody is laughing. So they are talking of answers, answers last week, for example. And I ramally woke up and had a brainwave and said that it was not supporting that they should shut down SARS. There's just a few people that are bad. Nayamali has been in the news since that day. He has gone the other way. People were going this way, he went the other way. People are saying, why not? Well, if not, this is, this is. That's the same principle Brobiski is using for all of you. All of you are now following Brobiski and listening to what he's saying. Like this answer as answers. I don't know who tell, told him to come and do campaign now. The guy had gone out on Twitter and all those Instagram things and said, No, um, you people should not invite me. You know, insult people that will, you know, call out people that told him to come out. I said, Show me the people who called you. The idea is that go the other way, be controversial. You know what? People like controversy. They will bring their money to you because you are the king of controversy. They will give you money. Remy Mokuri in the US is doing the same formula. Buari Tomento, hashtag everywhere. People are following him. People are doing quotes. He will wake up in the morning. Don't invest your money in bank. I think you people should listen to that quote. Don't invest your money. I don't put your money in a bank. If you want to borrow money in a the bank, they will tell you to go and bring property. So invest your money in property. So that's why you must invest with that day to day. So if you wake up and you are thinking, Oh, I don't have enough money to invest. 50K, I can tell you, with or without, just as our king said. Look, I've been in Abuja now, how many days? My apartment here is over, it's close to $2,000 for a month. Whether I like it or not, I wait every day. There is no day I ate less than 5K. So whether I invest the money or I don't invest it, I will spend it. That's the principle. And if you don't invest your money now, let me tell you, your money will devalue. If you had 3.5, I'll be 3.6 million naira as at match, and you had converted it to ten thousand dollars, you have it in your account. By now, your money has appreciated by one million naira. So if you keep your money in your account, and I say I'm saving to do something one day, one thing. Look, let me tell you, your money is devaluing. So real estate is appreciating. So when that they say bring 50k, bring 150, you see the payment plan. I think we should post the link for. For the flutter wave for people who want to pay i think you should do that now at this time you should just get on it make your payment now because there is this thing about i will do it tomorrow i will invest tomorrow honestly there's nothing like that look guys i can tell you i have i know a number of apartments that do by the time i will be 45 i will have 100 apartments that's it i know any apartment i'm talking to you now we're building one we're building a set of 10 apartments so antade taught me those principles Every time we are discussing, he's telling me about it. I was there, he even sat me down. He taught me about governor's consent, CFO, a survey, is this survey, red, red tape. He explained everything to me, gazette, uh, all those things. He sat down, he taught me that lesson. He had forgotten, if possibly. But by the time me too, I sit down with the real estate thing and I'm learning. I know how much I've made from it. I buy his cash flow. It's cash flow for me. By the time I finish on the apartment, I just used to say that if I'm making five five hundred k per apartment, that's fifty million naira a year. Passive. Nobody's disturbing me. The asset is still there. You better invest with Tade now. That you have fifty k. Look, in two thousand and uh, in two thousand and nine, I went to um, Lakwe side. One Baptist church invited me to come and speak. Then the guy I was consulting for usually give me like 50k every month. But because 
my neck was very long. I needed money. So I would carry my 50K. I would save 15,000 naira. I would do, I usually, you know, give friends, do all of this. I had a friend that was with me then. I will give him 5K. So everything would just have finish. They now took me from Lakwe to Abu Yaya that I should come and look at the land. Then the land was about 400,000 or something in 2008. My own calculation was, this is my eight month salary. If you know how much they are selling land there now, I'm regretting it. If I'd broken up then, I said, okay, I'll give you 20,000 Naira now. Hold it to. Don't worry, I will pay you balance. And the following month, again, I give them another 20,000. And as my condition begin to improve, I give them 50,000. I'll have paid 400,000 for a land that they can sell for 20 million now in 2008. So I just wonder why people come with those register and tell story and I don't have anything. I don't have anything. I hope I will raise some money soon. You see, all those excuses are the things that have not made people scale. I can tell you that for free because of my own experience. And you know what? As you get better and better in life, you are looking at bigger aspirations. Take the 500,000 naira in your account now. Go on that website and then punch in your card, pay through Flutterwave or ask for the account number. If the thing is not going, let them tell them supply you account number now. Transfer the money. Because if you don't make emotional decisions now, I can tell you, you wake up tomorrow morning. That is when they will call you, your mother is sick. Look, it happened to me. Tade knows my mom. Tade saw my mom when was I? two weeks before she died. And you know what? The best I could do was then I think she was going, I gave her 70k or 100k. Look, today, if you don't wake up and smell the coffee and start investing, look, you would run broke very early. I can tell you, my father has six houses, none of them is in Lagos. The one in the village, he built it in 1980 something. It's five million naira they're offering to buy the house. A six bedroom duplex, five million naira. I don't know how much he built it then. Now, the one in the lorry, he paid 95,000. I have the receipt of all those. You know, my parents are there, so I have access to all the documents. He paid 95,000 naira for the house in the lorry. The house, at the time they did valuation recently, they said the seven million, eight million money. You play with that there, you know. If he had bought house in Ikeja, 95,000 naira at the time he bought it. When he was running Leadway, oh no, my papa for if we had house in Allen, maybe me and Daddy now be discussing that they take the house floor. <laughs> and God will have bought, will have done so much. So it's giving you an opportunity to invest now. You are still resisting in your mind. I will discuss. Look, let me tell you part of what I do. Eh? Sometimes I invest and then call my wife later and say, but the bowl because some of you do this thing in church. You have done offering. I've uh, said, Pastor, I've spoken. You are emotional. You now drop money. I'm not against church, you know. I, I actually thought God called me to become a pastor before. So it's now I understand better that my calling was bigger than becoming a pastor. It's just, uh, so it's not like calling of a pastor is small. Uh, just that the, the, the thing, uh, I can tell you that day knows me. I'm like a rebel in church. Look, I've pastored church of over 2,000 before, so it's not, it's, not, it's not... I've read the Bible over 14 times. Look, let me show you some things in the Bible. So that's why... Because I keep quoting Bible so that it's not like... Uh, because some of us, I know there are Muslims, there are atheists and all of that in this in this conversation. Look, Abraham, what he did was that he bought land in the land. Isaac, they came to negotiate with him. Let me now tell you the one that is worse. It's, called, it's this guy, Joseph, in the Bible. Maybe you guys didn't get what Joseph did. Joseph is the one that makes you pay land use tax to, till today in the Bible. Have you read that place before? Joseph is the one that made you pay land use tax. When the people had given all the money that they had, they could not do anything again. He started collecting land in exchange for food. So he collected the whole land in Egypt. Go and read your Bible, is there. So people will come, last, last. Nigeria population by calculation by UN will be about 500 million in 2030. Calculate from now to 2030, 30, 30 years down the line. How old will you be at 30 years in your age? Do you want to still be living in a house somewhere? Carry your money now and say, look, this is the little I have. I want to start now. Take my widow's might. I make a commitment. That is how you do it. So I would advise if you have some money with you now, make a decision, put your money on the table and see your money work for you. See how investment begins to compound. Because the principle of compounding is what makes you rich.
is there is no hard labor to this thing. I can tell you, I've experienced it. I've been there. I've seen things. I've been, you know, I've I've been broke. My first four days in Lagos, I slept under the bridge. I've I've suffered in Lagos. I've tried for marketing with Tony Pan. I know all the boys in Empire then knew me. I can tell you these things. But after that, I went to Harvard. How did I do it? Even at the time when I wanted to you no know, go rent a house and I spent money on investing in myself and all of that. So these are some fundamentals. Then I will tell you this last story. In 2013, I happened to come to Abuja with a friend. We there was this lady that bought a car and then they said they needed somebody to drive. I needed some money. They said they would give the person 50k. I just told my friend, no, Baba is your girlfriend at that time. My friend, my the guy was my best friend. I like my best man when I got married. So I was his best man. That's how close we are. So yeah, he told me that this babe, you know, when then he was not married, this babe wanted to drive like me, he would give person 50k. I said, that's all work or something, we will drive this car. So I drove to Abuja. And when we got to Abuja, we went to Sheraton to go and see somebody. The guy was playing saxophone. Ah, we greeted the boy, the boy greeted us. While we were there, the only thing I noticed was that we met uh, Mitchell or something, this guy that owns Interswitch. I saw the way he was greeting that man, you know. These people look like, these people have money, Charles. But, you know, as a young guy, I didn't know much. I just humble. So when we're talking, ah, I told you that I said, do digital, I do social media. I said, okay, okay, my pastor is coming to preach here. Let's quickly go and do social media or something for him. Let's, to be you no know, Facebook, because I did, I quickly started setting up Facebook, did email marketing, did everything that night. Then we're done, it was 3 a.m. You know, I said, oh, you can't go back to your place now. And you know, this is Abuja. Why not sleep in the hotel with me here? So we slept on the floor in Sheraton with him, my friend and I. We just hung on the rock there. We just slept, gave us pillows. We slept, he ordered food for us. And then when he got to Lagos, he called out far. My pastor still need your service. He was happy what you did. The next thing, I went to their church and then they said, Oh, they'll be giving me is it 50 100k every month then. And I was in their social media, I was managing it for them. And they said, Come to my office. I got there, they said, Oh, meet social and so lady and Nikon. Before you know what's happening. The lady didn't really take me serious the way she was looking at me. I just felt a bit insulted. I was angry. Because when I look at her age, she wasn't too far from me now. Her age, you know. I didn't know that she was a power broker. So, you know, but courtesy demand, I took, you know, good, you know, she greeted, I greeted her, you know. And she's very brainy. She's a doctor at that time, you know. I mean, I didn't have, I didn't have masters, don't say. I didn't have masters. Only for three months after, the lady called. That, hey, can you remember we met at so and so place? Then um, my boss daughter has some issues. We did we fix the issue. Um for one story led to the other. The boss was Dan Gote. Before you know what's happening, as I speak to you today, we are doing CNN advert for him. We are managing the social it's working. And we are, we are making sure Dan Gote is fine online. And from there, Dan Gote has introduced me to Emir of Kano, the one that was removed, a couple of them. I can tell you that's power of chain reaction in terms of networking. If the day Egmont told me to come and do that, I was telling him that, ah, eh, sir, you give me some 20000 to go and do this job. I will probably never meet Dan Gute in my lifetime. But now when the guy, you know, even two days ago, somebody impersonated his daughter, they sent me the thing. I quickly removed the thing. So, don't, and you know, when you change your customers and you start dealing with customers that can pay you, which is the, the formula Joseph used. Joseph was servicing some customers in the prison. All those people, the best they can give him is their food. But the day he changed to a prime minister, I mean, he changed to the pharaoh of the land, they gave him prime minister as a gift. So you must look at the kind of customers you want to service. That will determine the kind of things you want to do. I have clients today that I have subscribed five cartons of ragolis for them every week. That's like 5K every week for, for 365 days. There is no way they are drinking my water and forget me that they should not give me project. You wake up in the morning, you look at what strategy are you using. Remember what Obon King said, the, the quotes he gave about the gazelle and the lion is in the book called uh, The Vision. That's the first thing you will see when you open the book. He said, every day in Africa, the gazelle must outrun the lion, uh, or the lion must outrun the gazelle, um, the, the lion must outrun the gazelle, else the lion will die of starvation, or the gazelle must outrun the lion, or it will become food. If you don't wake up and take actions today and begin to network deliberately, you reach out to 10 people every day. 
He showed you, he, he sent SMS to a lot of people. Only 50 responded, four became contracts. That is the principle. I used to send 100,000 emails every day for 30 days. As I speak to you now, part of, let me give you one of the trade, one of the secrets going on in my office. I hired 13 people. It's something you can go and vet in my office. 13 people, as I speak to you now in my office. All they've been doing in the past one week is that they are gathering all the companies that we need HR services or tech services or digital marketers in the US. And I gave them a goal to give me 5,000 of them in US, Australia, Canada, UK, uh, Sweden, and all of that. Because I want to earn in dollars. And you know what, interestingly, people are still paying us from Dubai. Even today, I still got money from Dubai that they didn't pay me in Naira, in, do, in dollars. So when I build, they know you know what that means. So I'm not doing this because I'm doing this because it's a close meeting. That's why I can give you some figures. Else I'll be looking at everybody because the idea is that I don't want to be popular, I want to make money. Do you get popularity does not equal money? So some of you are going after becoming influencer and all of that. Uh, people will know me. People will know you are not giving you money. Go after what we make make them bring out money from their pocket. So the other thing is that money gives you confidence, money gives you options. Money loves speed. Let me still like that this language. Money does not have emotion. So if I have money, money does not have emotion. There is nothing like brother or sister in, them, in money. Money does not have emotion. Focus on the objective. Make the most of what you can make with your life. Focus on the objective because the idea is the more money you have, the more you have, you have friends. And then the, the higher you go in this conversation. So I, I, I think, let me just stop there. Yeah. I want you to just look at the website, type it out if it's yeah, not there. No. Yeah, no, just go. You are, you are, you are, you are made out. You are going to be a student again. Ah. Okay, can you hear me? All right, Dio, thank you very much. Yeah, I can hear you now, Dio. It's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm okay. so happy. I'm so, I'm so delighted. People have blown us away. The comment is mind blowing. You know, people are learning about, I, I know you. So I know the role that you play when it comes to network. You know, the truth I of the matter you is know, your network, you like they would say. say Somewhere is this one we say we are going to uh, listen. Uh, four point by Shara. Sit down and we will meet people. People yeah, will yeah, give yeah. us their money. Yeah. That was me. Me and you we have done. 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 We have have learned a lot from you. So I don't know. Okay, Dio, somebody has a question, really. Let me quickly let me answer this question. Dio, help me answer this question. Okay. Somebody asked that, uh, can you just give in one minute or two, one minute, uh, the, the principle, in summary, the principle of the bait and the, pre, and the poison. What is the summary of that principle? Okay, so the bait, it means that give people as much favor as they can owe you, such that when you are giving them the favor, you know you have an agenda. That is what they call the wisdom of this world. In the Bible, yes. because they said the children of this world are wiser than us, they will do so much favor. If you see people want you to join witchcraft or banjo, or the people are joining our courts up and down, what they do is that they shower so much money on people that they get confused. Do so mm -hmm. much kindness, act of kindness, that people begin to like you, that they owe you favor, they owe you something in return. That is the principle of the bait. Now, for principle of the salt, just don't overdo things. Go mm -hmm. gradually, just give them as just enough for them to be happy. Keep giving out, which is something like uh, um, what they call, in marketing is called inbound marketing. Give people enough information, give people free things like what uh, Osh Poppy he will be doing free, free, free till his followers became over two million. It was free, free, free. People were there, they were men were done with it that we know of. His followers is about 200,000. Then we asked what we knew. We all well knew he was doing something bad. People we know that maybe this guy has an agenda, but do so well. Some of you want to catch a girl. You are trying to impress her. Take her out to um, a hotel, signature on top of a hotel. Let her eat there and ask her, will you marry me? Have you seen anybody they film there that said no before? Nobody said no. <laughs> I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not liking this thing you are doing. I'm not liking this thing you are doing. Eh? Honestly, you know? yeah, I'm not telling you. These are, these are 
Then the principle of the poison, make sure that you have something that whether you wow. give them big or small, they can never do without you. Let them wow. demand for you at every level. So look for something that is a pain point in their life and be the supplier. Like the person I'm giving five cartons of ragulis every week. The mm. week they don't bring, the person calls me to ask, ah, go on, go me what? Because they have mm. relied on me to make that. And I've told the person, it's one year subscription. So the person will call me. Ah, so ah, my mother was here. She was happy. She went home with two cartons. Oh, I'm just getting into your mind. You know I have an agenda. Everybody knows everybody has an agenda. If you are getting close to you. Sorry for cutting you. Sorry for cutting it in. I have a lot of questions here for you. And I need you to answer okay. it before you go. Um, um, ask us questions. Somebody is asking a question here. Uh, let me see some of the questions that are, that are here. Um, somebody is asking question. Remember, you can ask a question by putting, okay. Somebody is asking a question here, Dio. He said, as a project manager, how can you undo and raise things for projects that you knew little about? Can you quickly answer okay. that? Okay, so this happens to every one of us. It's not every project that you know everything about. What you do is that look for a very resourceful person. When I mean resourceful, I don't mean an expert in that field. Get the person to your side and sit down, sit down with mentors that can help you design. I, okay, very successful person first that will tell you, this is how this thing used to happen. No? This is who you need, this is who you need, this is who you need. I happen to be sitting down with some military men one day and they said, for every time you get into a new position, first create a, cab a kitchen, um, a kitchen, uh, what do you call this people? Um, a kitchen committee for yourself. Find three people that you trust the most and they will be the one to help you plan it. So look for people that you know are very resourceful in that field. Bring them together. Go and listen to them talk. So, for example, when I was, when I started going into building and I'm learning how to do building, I went to some places behind my house and I saw they were doing piling. And I stood there and I was asking them questions. They said they will first dig, they will do soil testing, they will go down, they will pull holes, they will put this. I was gathering information so that the day me too, I want to build my own. And when I start building, I will not get into the house after two weeks. The house is bending. No. So I got that information that way. Then when the architect was telling me about fire, I said, man, how deep are you going? The guy now that stood that this guy is not a novice. So got that resourceful mm -hmm. people, and then you can now be the team. All right, fantastic. Thank you, Dio. Finally, for okay. today. Um, okay, great. Okay, finally, for today, Dio. I would like to ask okay. a question. I would like to ask a question. How would you say that networking has helped you to grow your cash flow and to give you a good sense of investment? Okay, fantastic. Now, networking, um, as it were, is the business itself. That is where your business is. It's not the technical thing. You see, it's like those professors that know book very well in your school when you're, when you're on campus. Professor Mamma, we want Mamma Pogo. But there are some professors. Some people don't even know anything. One or more way, other more way. So, sorry, I'm just using some Yoruba gimmick. Some of us may not be Yoruba here. So there are people who just I don't know this guy because that's it. Oh my not to describe it. Now, but for you, you must be smart mm -hmm. in terms of relationship because it's the relationship that brings business anywhere in the world. Go to London today, the people you know that you give business to. So it's the relationship that brings forth business for you. It's because of relationship, people will call me and say, look, I'm in London, I want to do X, Y, Z. As I speak to you, there's one very big church, very big church, massive church in Lagos. I can't mention their name. They are very big. Yesterday, they shut down their Instagram. They were calling people, calling everybody. None of them had answer. They now reached out to me. I said, no problem. I'm having a meeting with Facebook today. I have resolved the matter. The resolve matter gave me two thousand dollars. Big church, they shut down their Instagram yesterday. It's relationship, and these are people who are giving me referrals. I don't even know the pastor. If the pastor see me on the road, he will pass me. But okay. Okay. There was somebody um, that business uh, into your business cash flow. Hello. Sir. Yeah, I can hear you now. I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you, Dio.
Hello. The network. I can hear you now, Dio. I can hear you. Dio. Hello. Can you hear me? Okay, I can hear you now. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, okay. we're in Nigeria. So this. Okay, so you must have enough people around you that can help you build your business. Now, it's still within that same circle that they will now teach you how to invest. Look, I've learned a lot from Tadia, and I used to say this thing, time without number. You know, Tadia has taught me how to invest in real estate. I've sat down with him. I've asked him questions. There are days we just say, just call me. I'm leaving the office. Let's meet Anita Mala. The guy is teaching me cash flow. Sometimes he will call me. I'm reading this book. I know how many books I've read through that day. So I can tell you for free. He was one of the first people who gave me book gifts in Lagos. That gives me book gifts. Many people just know you. They will just be greeting you. Worst case, they'll be asking, let's eat suya. That day will give you book. I can tell you that one for free. He gave me books as gifts. And I'm very happy to work with my dad. Somebody uh, here. Uh, a question here. Yeah, sorry for poking your thoughts. I think the last question for today, there's a question here. Okay, um, uh, one of, yeah, a question says that uh, I, I, I can't, this guy is speaking Spanish. Um, he said, How do I start billing people as a startup? You know, um, or you talk about giving freely. He then said, How, do we, how does he start billing people as a startup? Can you help us to elaborate on that? Please? Okay, so I don't know the exact business, I don't know the exact business but billing comes from different angles. Um, one okay, can you guys All hear right. me now? Yes, can we hear you now? No, I can hear you now, Dio. Okay, so I want to start billing as a startup. Really, what I have learned in terms of billing, in terms of startup, is that billing comes in different sizes, it depends on your business model. But one business model I've learned, it was started that even introduced me to the book. It's called The Automatic Customer. Uh, there is this book called The Automatic Customer. Oh, God. So there is a book called The Automatic Customer. Automatic Customer. The book called Automatic If you can lay your hands on it, it will help you understand how to do billing. The book called Automatic Customer, if you can get it, it will help you understand billing. Tade mentioned the book to me long ago. I bought the book last year, but I've been doing billing before that time. Okay. And in that book, you will be able to understand how billing goes, how to price, time pricing. If you, if you ever do your pricing based on time, you will probably reach. But if you do your pricing based on value, you will make money. But if you do your pricing based on time, time hours, we work for two hours, you pay us uh, 10 naira, you will probably never make it. But price based on value. When the person, when the person asks you that how much is Coca-Cola in your shop, you usually sell at 100 naira. Can you say in a nutshell that somebody needs to have to, to price bill based on value, not just uh, pricing or not just an hour.